Hello YouTube, my name is Trey. Welcome to Working on Change. Today we're going to be talking about becoming Avia. Okay, this is a TikToker, but before we continue, at the end of this video, if you want to like and subscribe, if you like it, please do. You don't, that's cool. We are also working our way toward the soundboard, so here is my cash app if you want to help donate. Um, we are trying to get a soundboard here on the set to make just help with the sound and make things a little bit smoother uh, so, you know, I can do more stuff over here. We are always trying to improve the set, so thank you. All right, moving on. DJ, don't put that right back up after I just said, oh my gosh, watch the video. If you're a trans girl who still has the parts that she was born with, I want to know what you like to call those parts. My personal favorites are Sheamus and Princess Wand. So obviously I went to this individual with TikTok and this video doesn't exist anymore. Um, I'm assuming that they got a lot of hate comments because once somebody finds it on X and it gets put on X, it's all over for you, buddy. X, formerly known as Twitter. I'm only going to say that a cup for maybe one more week and then y'all just going to have to get with the program. Okay? So people had a problem with him saying calling it a Sheenus and a Princess one, but you know me, I'm nosy. So I had to go look into the TikTok and, you know, check out some more stuff. And I got a couple things I want to talk about. So, first thing I want to talk about is when boy mode is no longer easy. Let's watch this video. In the beginning of my transition, I, in the beginning of my transition, I would go into boy mode when I needed to feel safer. Recently, I tried to go into boy mode and I realized that I can no longer pass easily as a straight gender conforming man. I guess that might seem obvious, but it came as a bit of a shock to me and it marked an important milestone in my transition. There's an embodied sense, especially with my chest, of there's no going back. That's a little bit scary, but mostly it's really exciting and really gender affirming. In the beginning of my transition, I would go into boy mode when I... Okay, so let's talk about this first one right here. Going into boy mode. First of all, I don't understand what that means if you're going to call yourself, and this person says they're trans femme, so what I've seen. But what does it mean to be boy mode? First of all, you're a grown man. Grown. What do you mean boy mode? What does it mean to be boy mode? In fact, we're gonna look up exactly what that means, right? Cause I wanna, I wanna go after the actual definition and then we'll talk about it ourselves. <clears throat> boy mode. To present as a boy, regardless of one actual gender, especially of a trans woman, that does not help at all. Because to be a boy, you have to define a boy. And to define a boy, you have to define a if you can define a boy, you can define a girl. And if you can define a girl, guess what? You can define a man. And if you can define a man, guess what? You can define a woman. So in order to get all the way to this trans woman, you have to be able to define what is a boy to be able to go into boy mode, right? What is What do boys do that make them boys? See, that's the problem with a lot of this um, ideology that comes out. It's only more confusing the more they talk. You just let them talk themselves right into a hole. Right. This man is obviously confused. There's a lot of things going on with him. We're going to talk about another video that this individual made. This this one had me kind of confused. If I can get it to play here. You know how TikTok be. One of the most liberating things about transitioning is getting to redefine gender on your own terms. We also have this opportunity to redefine what it means to be our age. I've just turned 40 this year. I don't feel like I need to behave or dress like a 40 year old woman. These these notions of what's appropriate, they're just these, these social constructions, these social norms. And when you're trans, you get really comfortable with breaking those conventions. If you can do it for gender, why not do it for age too? One of the most liberating things about Duh, I like how in the comment getting... section, see, yeah, the reason you saw a like on that video is because I was trying to place play, and when you double tap it, likes it or loves it, whatever this is, take that right off. Okay, let's go back. See now, all right. I don't think anyone is concerned how you dress. The transphobes on the transphobes on Twitter, now known as X, sure seem to have a lot about to say about it. Your hair looks very easy and com that looks not knocking the guy but this hair is not anyway maybe not relevant but this look this top is flatter see 
Y'all know how I feel about dressing age appropriate. Number one, right? There is something about how you dress. Let's just go off of the trans thing for a second. There should be something different between you and a 30 year old. There should be different between you and a 40 year old and a 50 year old. You know, I was talking to a young man the other day. We were talking about how um, if I wore a do-rag, that's part of the culture. Listen, there should be a twist in between me and somebody who's a teenager. I should not look like a teenager when I dress. When I am out in public, it should be very clear that I'm older. It, it should be very clear when you see me somewhere. Either you think now because, you know, obviously me, me having a beard and stuff like that, I may get older anyway. But young men grow beards just like I do. I shouldn't look like a 20 year old walking around. You know what? And it's so funny. When you start dressing differently, and I just started dressing like this recently. I've been wearing button-ups for a long time. I made that transition like three, four years ago when I stopped I, I stopped wearing t-shirts altogether. I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with a t-shirt, but I don't ever wear them on video, and I don't wear them in town when I go anywhere. But I want to say this. When I started wearing a tie and I started wearing a shirt, you know, everybody has their, you know, jokes and stuff like that. Um, why? Why are you looking so nice? Man, it's this and that. Wow. Why are you going somewhere? I want people to say that. That's the purpose. Because I should carry myself differently. When you start dressing differently, you start becoming more uh, more mature, right? I should look different to somebody who's in their 20s. One of the main problems we have, and I'm glad this individual brought it up, even in the, even in the trans community, everybody wants to be 20. Everybody wants to be 20. And you can't. You can't. Nobody wants to take on the responsibility of being an adult. Nobody wants to take on the responsibility of growing up. They just want to stay in this place where they would they no longer have to grow up. Somebody was talking about this the other day. You see this in every community these days. The the women in this one in particular in the women community. What I'm saying, trans women, in women, girl dinner, girl boss. Girl's girl. Girly. All this stuff. Nobody wants to say a woman did her. Because they think the sick you like in your in your sixties. Nobody, nobody saying you're a girl boss makes it sound like you're a little child. Girl's girl. Girly. You hear this all the time on TikTok when other women talk to each other. At some point, we've got to grow up. And I find it different that these uh, this is the second man that i've seen go into their 40s and now they want to be a woman but they still want to act like they're still 20 years old still trying to date like they're 20 year old not trying to be an adult like they're 20 year old not only do they want to be a woman they want to go back to being a young woman as if them becoming a woman changes their age <sighs> let's watch one more video I, I got so much I could say on that, man, but you know, you just not, the, to not the video. The world is a visibly trans woman and it's safe for you to do so. I highly recommend if you're just starting to move through the world as a visibly trans woman and it's safe for you to do so. I highly recommend leaning into looking different, looking like a freaky deaky gender cowgirl. Everyone is going to already think that you're a freak no matter what you do. So have fun with it. Go all out. Give no fucks. It's very liberating. I found it to be a really great fuck you to cishet hegemony that wants us to feel badly about ourselves. If you're just starting to move through the world. This, really this concept it? of us wanting you to feel bad and this person talks about their white privilege, whatever. So this concept that, that, see, this is always also another argument, is when we talk about people and we talk about being against the trans community and the ideology of being trans and what it does to people and the mental illness that comes with it, but they make it seem like it's trendy and it's cool because it's a whole do whatever you want. Just like this individual just said, give no fucks, right? The problem is that they turn it into a hate thing when we disagree with the ideology, it's always a, they want us to hate ourselves. Nobody wants you to hate yourself. I want you to love yourself, but I believe that ideology teaches you to hate yourself. That's the exact opposite. Why is that? I say all the time that, the, that when they say you need to go good, put on a chest binder, you need to have your breasts removed, have your genitals removed. You need to change your clothing. You need to start talking differently. You need to start acting differently. 
You see this person, this grown man, and got breast. Why? Why? Because they don't accept themselves. There's no way you can fully convince me that you have fully accepted yourself for exactly who you are when you have changed everything about yourself. And then you tell us that we are jealous of you, that we envy you because you're being your true self. No, you're not. You envy us because we are still walking around this world being ourselves. You have literally changed everything and then are upset that we don't agree with it and then say that we want you to hate yourself. No, we want you to love yourself. And the beautiful thing about loving yourself is that you're not always going to feel it. What they want us, what they want us to really say is that if you transition, you'll be happy. Yes, go do it. You'll be happy forever. And that's the lie that we all get perpetuated to ourselves. You're not going to meet a whole lot of individuals in this world, in this life that are happy. When I did, we just talked about people acting age appropriate. Everybody wants to stay 20. Everybody. They want to, they want, they, they want everything to be exactly how they want it. They want to dress like they're in the 20. They want to party like they're still in the 20. They want to act like they're in the 20. They want to be naive like they were in their 20. They don't want to grow up. They don't want to accept that we do get older. They don't want to accept the realities of life. They don't want to accept the responsibilities of life. That's why you get parents that are friends with their kids. It's the same thing, man. Nobody wants to take on the responsibility that it really takes to be a parent or takes to be an adult in this world because it is tough. Right. You do have to grow up. You have to deal with the you have to deal with your own morality, too, that you're going to die one day that you can't just do whatever you want. And it has no consequences. One day we're all going to have to answer for our actions in some way or some form unless, you know. My, my point is. Nobody wants you to hate yourself. We just want you to realize that you will never truly love yourself if you're constantly going through the change. You're 40 years old and thinking that being. A woman is going to make you happy, even though you have no idea what that's ever going to feel like because you didn't grow up a woman. You're 40 year, you're a 40 year old man putting on breasts to make yourself seem like a woman. But see, that's my point. Again, you don't want to take the risk. You don't want to take on the life of what it means to be a man. And that could be a host of different things. But you just hearing the word man. You just living that life as a man makes you hate yourself because of what you were born as. You can't accept it. And I find it funny because a lot of us have to accept a lot of us have to accept a lot of things. Go go outside and really touch grass. And what I mean by that is there's people who are truly disabled. There are people who are burn victims. There are people who have been scarred the rest of their life. People who don't have certain limbs. There are people who have gone through the most the craziest stuff you've ever heard of. Right? There's people who have to go to, that are hospitalized. Every single day. I watched a video of a 15-year-old girl. Every day, she has to go to the doctor. Every single day. Gets poked, gets prodded, gets tests ran on her. She can't eat the same. She has to drink a different way. Normal-looking girl, if you were just looking at her, not knowing the horrendous stuff that she's going through. What can she do? Can she just change who she is? Can a burn victim who is part of a tragedy of domestic violence, can they just change their life? Can they no longer be a burn victim? Do these scars just go away? We made a video the other day. We made a video today talking about two black men who were sexually assaulted, waterboarded, tortured. One had a gun put down his throat and had the trigger pulled. He survived. But his life changed forever. Are they supposed to just change? You don't think in that moment they wish they could have just been white for a second? We all go through horrendous stuff. Well, no, we don't all go through horrendous stuff, but there's people who have gone through horrendous stuff and they can't change anything about their life. Anything. How does it make those people feel? That you feel like you can just change and just become happy. What about them? What can they do? That's what my, that's my problem. It's such a selfish movement because it's, it's saying that because they change their, their sex or their gender and that the rest of us should be happy for them because they're truly happy now and you should we should learn to accept ourselves and accept them. No. People are going through stuff where it's hard to look in the mirror every single day. 
And you have you have the nerve, if I can say that word. You have the nerve to tell us that we're transphobes. Because we tell you that you're not truly accepting yourself. You're mutilating yourself in some ways. Changing everything. When there's people out here, there's not a dang thing they can do about their looks. Not a dang thing they can do about how they have to live their life. There's some people who are going to live the rest of their life suffering. And they somehow figure out a way to put a smile on their face. And just make it another day. And you have the, the nerve to tell us. That we don't understand. You didn't see that video, but another video of this individual says, we don't understand what it's like to be trans. We don't understand what it's like to walk around and have people stare at us. Nobody understands that but trans people. Nobody on the planet understands what it feels like to have people stare at them. When there's people with so many, gen there's so many people with so many disabilities, people who are genetically born in different ways, people who are born, born attached to another person. There are people who are born who don't look eventually attractive at all. People who are born with things that make you stare because they look so different. People who are born with no arms. People who are born with... Y'all just don't get it. Y'all just don't get it. Y'all feel like y'all are the only people being stared at because you put on breasts? That's crazy to me. All y'all ever think about is y'all selves. And that's why I can't stand this group. I can't. They're selfish. Because they only think because they are dealing with the mental illness that they are the most important people on the planet and nobody can ever understand what they're going through. And then they put it under the guise of love is love until you show up at a rally or you show up at something like Let Women Speak in Austin, Texas. You show up to that thing and you got people out there saying, shut up, you stupid turf. Women can't even talk anymore. But you're the only person who ever feels anything on this planet. And that's what it sounds like to us. But you don't get it. You'll never get it. Unless you open your mind to what we're trying to tell you. We are not different. That's what we're trying to tell you. We're both human beings. We're both human beings. But y'all don't care. Y'all go out of y'all's way to divide us. I hate having to say, oh, I'm me, and that's the LGBT over there. I'm not. That's me and other people who are in a group. But they make themselves they make that their everyday life. And then, or it's, it's me, I'm a man, and you're a trans man. We got to make ourselves completely different from each other. I can't love you like that because I don't understand what it's like to be you. Oh, God forget, God forbid, nobody understands what you're going through. I'm hating themselves. Wow, you're the only person on the planet who hates themselves when they look in the mirror. Surprise, surprise, if you haven't noticed, depression and the suicide rate has gone up quite a bit. Let me know what you guys think, man. Um, I'm just, I'm just, well, I'm just over it, man. I'm just, I'm just over hearing these people every single day make their problems feel like they're way worse than anybody could ever experience. Instead of truly trying to help themselves and love themselves, they teach us to hate ourselves more and more. There's an agenda behind all this and you know what it is. Goodbye.